I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, and today on the Retro Hunting Adventures, we're going to be talking about Blazing Dragons for Sega Saturn. It's not a very often day that I find a new Sega Saturn game that I didn't have, and one that's reasonably priced too at $29.99. Yeah, that's not cheap, but do you know what some of the really rare Sega Saturn games cost? That's a bargain by comparison, trust me. And it's got the voices of Terry Jones and Cheech Marin, so how could you possibly go wrong? Well, I guess that depends on your opinion of point-and-click games. The Knights of Pathological Liar, Rapunzel's a Schizo, Forget the Sword, Bring a Psychiatrist. From the twisted mind of the Monty Python troop member Terry Jones comes Blazing Dragon. Now here we're already presented with a problem because the cover says Blazing Dragons, the side art says Blazing Dragons, but the back text says Blazing Dragon. So I went to look it up just to be sure and it is indeed Blazing Dragons, plural, which started out as an animated television series from Terry Jones and Gavin Scott, produced by Nelvana and Ellipse Animation. It only lasted for two seasons, 26 episodes in total, and if you're not familiar with it in the United States, there's a reason for that. It only aired in Canada and France, never here. So, this game may have already been doomed in a sense before it even got started and as i previously said the wikipedia entry for the video game confirms it's a point and click game so called that one right down the money produced by crystal dynamics directed by darren bartlett and designed by matthew seymour frederick j schiller and russell lingo programmed by matt gilbert and chuck Wu. the art was yuriko ito and russell lingo the writer was Frederick J. Schiller, the composer John Lawrence. This also got released on PlayStation, and apparently both versions got released at the same time, October 31st, 1996, and a month later in the European Union. As Flickr, the player must collect various objects and interact with a cast of dragon and human characters in order to solve puzzles. As is the case with many other graphic adventure games, the player can never reach a game over or otherwise reach a point where a puzzle cannot be solved. The overall quest is to become a knight to compete in the Grand Tournament and win the Heart of Princess Flame. The player discovers an evil human plot to take over the kingdom by kidnapping the princess. Reviews, according to this Wikipedia page, seem to be all over the map. Uh, 3 out of 5 from All Game, 2 out of 5 from CVG, 8 out of 10 from Electronic Gaming Monthly, 6 out of 10 and 5 out of 10 for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn versions, according to GameSpot. And then it gets really low there. Next Generation gave it 2 out of 5, and the Sega Saturn magazine gave it 23%. Wow, that's not promising, is it? Rob Alsetter from said same magazine said the humor, plot, interface, graphics, and voice acting were quote-unquote awful. I don't think I'd go that far because I've already played this game for this review. I don't think the voice acting is awful, although it definitely lends itself to cheeky comedy as you're about to see. I get the feeling some of the humor in this game would be better appreciated if you would actually watch the animated show that it's based on, but innuendo like Protect the Family Jewels, that just crosses over regardless. And if that's not your style of humor, well, then it's probably too juvenile for you. It is a game rated E10 and up, so it's definitely not an M for mature game. And if you're expecting that level of maturity, 
you're going to be disappointed. But from the minds of Monty Python, you probably shouldn't expect too much maturity anyway. So I can at least say as a fan of the Monty Python troupe, that sort of humor already appeals to me going in, which gives me a more favorable opinion of the game in general. However, one thing that immediately drove me batty is that it didn't seem to work with my wireless Sega Saturn controller. It's a modern controller, 2.4 gigahertz, six buttons, and very nice D-pad, and seemingly worked well enough when I was using it to navigate the menus to boot up, but once I got into actual gameplay, it wouldn't let me select anything or move around, so I ended up having to get out a 15-foot extension cord and the 3D pad that came packed in with knights and put those together and run the cord all the way across the rec room just to be able to play this. Yeah, I'm going to say that's probably not the fault of the controller. That's probably something specific about the way this game was programmed because I noticed when I unplugged the controller, it said you need to use a stator, uh, tongue-tied standard Sega Saturn. Say that three times fast. Standard Sega Saturn B controller. If you unplug any controller while you're playing this game, that's the warning message you get. But it didn't seem to care that I was using the 3D pad on an extension cord. That worked just fine. Couldn't use the analog stick, or maybe it's not analog in the case of the 3D pad. I'm, I'm assuming it is, but couldn't use the stick to control the movement of the character. Still had to use the D-pad, which really suggests to me that it should have worked with the wireless controller. What do I know? And you don't even move the character when I say move. You move the arrow around the screen and click where you want flicker to move and then flicker moves to that spot one of the criticisms of this game in reviews and on the wikipedia entry is the frequent load times i mean they're not obnoxiously long load times they take a few seconds but there is no shortage of them i will agree with that you know anytime you go from one room to the other there's a loading screen, and that can get tedious if you're looking around for items you need because Flicker is an inventor. Yeah, he's kind of the nerd of the dragons, and they make fun of him for that. They say, you'll never be a knight. You'll never compete in the games. You'll never win the affection of Princess Flame, blah, blah, blah. They're always getting down on him, and he seems to be rather chipper and upbeat despite the abuse of his fellow dragons, and he's constantly tinkering and making inventions to make his life better. And the first one he's trying to make is an automatic dishwashing machine to clean all of the dishes that have piled up because the king said, Flicker can't leave until the dishes are done. And he's got some of the parts he needs for it right there in the kitchen, like a mop that he sticks in the sink that he intends to rig up with some sort of powered device to spin it like a motor and then it would get all the dishes scrubbed and according to his own entry in his inventions book it would even scrub the scales of the dirtiest dragon so yeah that's one thing that you pick up in his bedroom when you start out is his book of inventions and he's got a sack that can seemingly hold an infinite amount of items and you go through the items in the sack and try to put them together to make the invention. And I've been wandering all around this castle, picking up anything that's not tied down. And sometimes he gives you a snarky or cheeky remark when you try to take something you shouldn't take. But generally, if it looks like you can pick it up, you can, and then you can add it to your sack. And I bring all these things back to the kitchen to try to assemble them to make the dirty dishes. And my efforts thus far have been in vain. I don't know without a fact or a walkthrough if I could figure out how to make this dishwashing machine to get the dishes done to progress to the next part of the game. And the loading screens just really don't help my enthusiasm for it because I feel like this would be better served playing it on something like an IBM computer, hence the Sierra online games I mentioned earlier because Loading didn't seem that tedious in Sierra Online games, not from my own memory of them. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Do I recommend Blazing Dragons? No, eh, that's debatable. 
Perhaps with a walkthrough, I would appreciate this more, but if you have to use a walkthrough to beat the game, doesn't that sort of defeat the purpose? And Ryan, you can't accuse me of not reading the manual because I did understand all the instructions in the manual. It was included with this game, and I even hooked up a controller that would have the right button inputs because my wireless controller was not accepting them. So it's not that I didn't read how to pick up items, how to use my inventory, how to select items from the inventory and use them, how to control my dragon walking around, how to get him to interact with other people and other objects. I figured all that out by reading the manual and using the controller and getting a feel for it, but whatever item I need to complete this dishwashing machine, I don't have and I don't know where to find it, and I'm stymied at this point. I don't want to say it's a bad game. I think the humor is pretty good. I think the animation is a bit limited, but that could either be because of the Sega Saturn or because of the style of the original series that it's based on. So I won't fault that, even though there are times when their bodies are barely moving and sometimes even their lips are barely moving and they don't always seem to be perfectly in sync, but that could be a stylistic choice based on the way this show was produced for television. And it's based on that show, even though the game, the box for the game, doesn't explicitly make that clear since that show was never released here. I feel like I'm going in circles, but then again, that's also the feeling I get playing this game. I'm just going in circles, trying to solve this dishwashing puzzle, never quite finding the item that I need to get Flicker out of the castle and on to the rest of the adventure. Oh well... I'm not going to return it. It would be too late to return it anyway. It's past 30 days since I bought it. And it works. There's nothing defective about it. But when I'm not doing a review of it for Retro Hunting Adventures, I'll have to look up a walkthrough, figure out what it is I'm missing, acquire that item, add it to the dishwashing machine, and then presumably progress to another puzzle where I have to pick up items and put an invention together because that's... That's Flicker's whole bag, no pun intended, on his sack full of stuff. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. This is the Retro Hunting Adventures, and we've been looking at Blazing Dragons. I, I don't think it's bad. I just think you better have a lot of patience if you're going to play this game. And there are probably better point-and-click games you can play, and they're better suited to being played on a computer. I hope that's fair. I'm being as fair as I can. I don't hate it, but I don't recommend it. Like, share, comment, subscribe. All those things help the channel grow. And I'll see you all in another video sometime really soon. Probably even tomorrow. Bye for now.